uh, welcome you all to the uh, teaching teaching process in history now it is the topic in the title of formation of the dmk party uh, which is one of the important topics in the history of tamil nadu and also in the history of india um, i am professor t arulanand professor emeritus in the department of history of vishwabhar college tiruchirappalli now let's go to the formation of dmk party uh, before that we should know something about the origin of the dmk party the dmk party pursued the path of non brahmin movement um, which had come from the dravidian association which was formed in their 1912 for the needs of the dravidians in order to oppose the um, aryan imperialism in the early 20th century and then the south indian liberal federation which was formed in their 1916 which was later on called as the justice party and the party ruled for about 3 decades in the pre colonial um, british rule and after afterwards ev ramasamy one of the important personality in tamil nadu who used to be reverently called as periyar he was the person earlier in the congress party and he quit the party and he formed a movement called the self respect movement when uh, the non brahmins were not given respect by the so called brahmins it was none other than periyar uh, e v ramasamy initiated the people first to give respect themselves so in such a way the self respect movement began to be carried on from 1925 onwards and then in the year 1944 when the earlier called justice party began to be in the diminished position it was the duty of periyar e v r uh, to change the nomenclature as the dravida munnetra kalagam or the dravidian association or dravidian federation which was the parental organization of the dmk party uh, mostly the dmk party uh, it has continued the policies of the dk one of the important uh, demand which was carried on by both dk and dmk was the creation of dravida nadu which means uh most of the south indian states especially tamil nadu andhra pradesh now the telangana um karnataka kerala and some parts of odisha and tulu area these parts were to be called as dravid dravidian region i uh, if we have gone through the history of india the history and the culture of south india seems to be somewhat different from that of north india and in some way rather the other the south indian history seemed to be somewhat better and somewhat more antique than that of the history of india so now um periyar ebr tn anadure and others they wanted to create dravida nadu as yes separate state linguistically and also in terms of racial sense that means dravidian as a race and when uh, the hindi was imposed upon all the students from the first standard to eighth standard in 1937 when the congress took over the power after the 1937 election on the basis of uh, indian act of 1935 now when the hindi was imposed the people of tamil nadu thought that it was uh, alien as like that of english so they began to oppose hindi uh, they thought that if hindi would have to be spread out all across the state 
the the brahmins they began to utilize the uh, position even uh, to control the non brahmin people through hindi as they had earlier for more than two centuries uh, uh, more than even 20 centuries they had controlled south india and non and non brahmins uh, through the language which was called as sanskrit so now they began to fight against the imposition of hindi from 1930 and even now uh, most of the leaders of dmk and dadmk they began to oppose the imposition of hindi not only there in lok sabha and rajya sabha in even everywhere in the country and the next uh, the party the dmk party and also the dk party these were all the parties to fight for the reservation for the socially weaker section of the people who had been dominated and suppressed by the brahmanical elements um, from the earlier time onwards now the dk party began to get into the trouble when both the leaders uh, EVR, EVR Periyar and CN Anadurai, they had some of the differences of opinion in some of the matters, especially uh, in the Independence Day, which was considered as the day of mourning by EVR Periyar. Uh, he thought that uh, if India would have to be independent, uh, the Brahmins and also the north indians they began to dominate south india and then um, uh, when the british were there they had they had been uh, oppressed only in politics if india would have to be independent both socially and politically the non brahmins especially the south indians they would have to come across trouble it was the view of periyar but it was not easy for CN Anathuri to accept. He stated that uh, it would have to be called as day of happiness. Uh, even though CN Anathuri, he was also of having the demand for Dravidian land, he insisted that at least that independence would have to be a somewhat uh, prelude to the independence of uh, South India or the Dravidian land. And also in the year 1949, one of the important issues uh, began to come across, uh, which was called as the issue of EVR Periyar's second marriage. Mani Mai, one of the DK volunteer who served as the personal assistant of EVR Periyar since 1943. Um, in the year 19, in the initial months of 1949, there was a rumor here and there about Periyar Maniamai's marriage. And at one point of time, Periyar revealed or announced about Periyar Maniamai marriage. At the particular time, uh, even Periyar began to point out that Maniamai would have to be the heir of EVR for the personal property and also for the organization. That means DK. So most of the DK uh, volunteers, leaders, they began to murmur about uh, Periyar Maniamai marriage. And then a nephew of EVR Periyar, E.V. Sambath, he was the first person to resign from the DK party as against the decision taken by Periyar to marry Maniamai. Uh, in the meantime, uh, most of the leaders they began to appeal Periyar to change the decision, but Periyar was stubborn on the decision. Uh, on 9th July 1949, the Periyar and EVR marriage was conducted, um, conducted and celebrated vehemently, and then. On 9th July 1949, uh, most of the DK followers 
they were discontent with the decision taken by uh, Periyar EVR. And when the when he announced about the alignment of Mani Ammai as the head of Periyar EVR in both the personal property as well as the organization, it began to create uh, some sort of um, hours and against Periyar EVR. This issue uh, began to create a rift in the uh, Dravida Kalagam. Um, most of the Dravidian rulers, they thought that it was because of the difference of age between 70 and 32. But some of the historians and the scholars, they differed in their view. Um, especially P.C. Ganeshan, who was a biographer of uh, C.N. Anadhuri, he pointed out that the issue was not the age between 70 and 32, but Periyar EVR's announcement about the alignment of Mani Ammai as the heir, which seemed to be important, and that was uh, the thing which furiated uh, so many followers, especially EVK Sambat, who aimed at um, to be declared as the heir of EVR, Periyar's personal property and the organization. So now, um, um, CN Anadurai and some other followers, they began to decide to quit the DK and then they uh, declared that they quit the DK with drops of tear. So in such a way, uh, the, the, the split in the DK began to be uh, unavoidable. Now, 110 Dravidian leaders like K. Madhilagan, EVK Sambath, V. R. Nidinjaliyan, N. V. N. Somu, K. Anbalagan and M. Karnanadi, uh, they began to think about the future of their uh, politics. They thought that they would have to create a special organization for themselves under the headship of C. N. Anadhuri. They began to carry on the discussion uh, at a house with door number 7, Pawalakara Street, uh, Madras on 17 September 1949. And then uh, it was to be considered as the beginning of the DMK since the thought of forming the DMK began to come across the mind of the leaders on the particular occasion. They began to decide the name as Dravidam Netakalagam, uh, that means Dravidian Progressive Federation with the same ideologies of DK, Dravidanadu, Tamil pride, self-respect and rationalism. Now, uh, even such leaders, they decided to have a triangular flag with a black in the top and red in the bottom as the party, party flag. And they thought that they would have to elect CN Anadhuri as the uh, general secretary. Now, 133 members, they were to be in the general body of the Dravda Mandatra Kalagam, CN Anadhuri as the general secretary. Uh, three of the committees were established for the smooth functioning of the party. Brabaganda committee was uh, nominated under the leadership of VR Nadanjali, Nadanjaliyan. Uh, other members were UVK Sambath, UVK Karnanadi, CP Sitarasu, UVP Asai Tandi and DK Srinivasan. Another committee which was called as Organizational Planning Committee uh, which was uh, to be formed under the leadership of K. Madhilagan and the Finance, Finance Committee under the leadership of Kanji Mani Molian uh, began to get into the uh, action and when uh, they began to start the party, that party was full of youngsters like V. R. Nadinjalian at the age of 29, Anbalagan of 27, M. Karnanabi of 25, MVP Asi of 25, K. Madhilagan of 23 and E. V. K. Sambath of 23. So now, such young and energetic Tamil leaders, 
they wanted to carry on change in the politics they avowed to march towards socio political advancement in the madras state now they planned to organize a grand inaugural meeting next day on 18th september 1949 in madras and then in the inaugural session a uh, 28 comrades of the party uh, they began to give thundering speeches on dravidian future plan of action under petambalayam palnichami as to be organized by k kavinda sami now um, uh, this is about the wall poster um, uh, which was to be uh, fully circulated on um, 17 september 1949 all across madras uh, about the uh, public meeting for the inauguration of dmk um, under petambalayam uh, palnichami most of the leaders present anadurai karunanidhi vr nadijaliyan um uh, so, um, sadhivani muthu and so many of the uh, popular and prominent leaders they took part in the inaugural uh, session and then it is the wall poster of the first dmk meeting um, now the dravidian rulers they jointly declared that the name of the party as dravidian nitrakalam the flag of the party uh, rectangular in shape having black color at the top and the red color at the bottom was introduced and also hoisted at the time of the meeting uh, all the leaders jointly declared that see in another way as the general secretary all the leaders jointly declared that the president position of the party uh, was allotted vacant for their patriarch periyar gvr who would have to come to join the party as the president um, that president position was vacant from 1949 till 1969 when there was a rift between uh, we are nadjaliyan and uh, m karnanvi after the demise of cn anathray the position of uh, president began to be created and karnanvi was uh, appointed as the uh, president uh, who served the position for more than 49 years from 1949 till his death in 2018 the general secretary cn anadurai declared open heartedly that both the dk and amk would function as a double barrel gun uh, in tamil as called as reticular tupaki he pointed out that there was no difference in terms of policy in terms of the demands all the demands of the dk would have to be the dem- demands of dmk but only the slight difference seems to be the difference of opinion between uh see an anadurai and followers and uh, a periyar evr so all the leaders insisted to fight for dravida nadu social justice and tamil identity and to oppose brahmanism sanskritization superstition north indian imperialism and imposition of hindi now um the dravida nadu uh, that dravida munetra kalagam which wanted to uphold the three principles duty dignity and discipline in tamil called as kadamai kanniyam kattupadu uh, as like that of the um, uh, watch words of french uh, revolution uh, liberty equality and fraternity uh, this dravidam munetra kalagam uh, it is a regional political party in india um, uh, which served for the purpose of uh the downtrodden people especially the backward and scheduled community people now we must go through the objectives of the dmk um as an indian party it has to work within the ambit of indian constitution ideals of sovereignty unity and integrity along with the principles of democracy socialism and secularism it is the parties to strive and forge a tamil cultural and linguistic identity uh, as tamil culture must have to be safeguarded uh, in spite of the interferences from hindi and sanskrit and most of the people they think that tamil seems to be the 
ancient language not only in india all across the globe so the tamil uh, identity must have to be safeguarded uh, by the people of tamil nadu uh, so it is the utmost duty of the dmk to uh, safeguard the interest of the tamils and it had to safeguard the dravidian political movement which had been initiated by the earlier justice sides like uh, yaman nayar and so many other persons and also evrs evr period social justice which was also to be given importance in the earlier days even at present uh, there is a need for social justice as pointed out by uh, evr period at the dmk it is to oppose the dominance of hindi speaking people on the south in whatever way the imposition of hindi and the priority to the sanskrit in order to uphold the spirit of south india uh, this party wants to establish the two language formula in tamil nadu to uphold the antiquity and greatness of tamil language uh, the tamil nadu state is always against the three language formula uh, which was put forward by the nationalist all across the country they thought that um, uh, hindi would have to be the integral language but it is not to be accepted by the tamil leaders like anadurai karnanidhi and others uh, the tamil leaders they think that uh, there should be two language enough for the students to learn one for the uh, intra uh, one for the uh, communication of uh, within one language people that means tamil and then uh, in order to have the link with other language people english is enough uh, and then they think that there is no need for hindi to be learned by the tamil students uh, this party wants to fight for state rights focusing upon the autonomy in state and federalism in the union when the party um, left away the demand for dravida nadu in the year 1963 uh, because of the 16th amendment act um, which made secession as illegal uh, it began to give importance to autonomy in state um, uh it, the party is to serve the society as an anti brahmanistic anti communalistic and imperialistic and uh, a development centric party uh, this dmk party it has the symbol rising sun which seems to be considered as uh, the symbol of pride um when the party was formed in their 1945 uh, it did not think anything about taking part in the electoral politics um, only in the year 1956 uh, when the general body members of the dmk party uh, at the conference uh, in tiruchirappalli they decided to go for uh, electoral politics at the dmk contested in the general election 1957 uh, with the independent independent symbols most of the party candidates understood in the common independent symbol rising sun uh, with the sun rising between the two mountains uh, 15 of the assembly seats uh, were secured by the dmk party and two of the lok sabha seats uh, consequently the symbol was recognized as the state party symbol for dmk by the election commission of india uh, this rising sun symbol it is apt to describe the political ideals and aims of the dmk it portrays the rising spirit of the dravidian people so as to bring themselves the lights of life like uh, the future aims of the people are not only of tamil nadu but also of south india um, so now um, to summarize the formation of dmk in the year 1949 um the party um it was formed on uh, in the footprints of south indian liberal federation which was formed in their 
and self respect movement which was started by periyar in the year 1925 as an upshoot of dk it uphold all the demands and the policies of uh, dk only because of the difference of, of opinion between uh, cn anadurai and periyar evr party began to be formed but even at the time the position of president was allotted they can they going to uh, periyar evr so the formation of dmk party seems to be an epoch making incident in the history of tamil nadu uh, which um, which was the thing on which uh, the politics of tamil nadu began to be carried on from 1967 till the time for about 55 years the dividend parties uh, parties rule uh, is in the verge of ruling with social justice and to uphold the spirit of the tamils and to uphold the state rights and to carry on and to safeguard the interest of the indian people uh, in terms of secularism and in terms of federalism uh, thank you so much.